Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Frank here. Last time we left off, I was welding the track pads up. So I'm going to continue to do that. I've got five, five more to do. And then I'm going to reclaim the three prototype pads that we had previously welded to the spare piece of chain. And then we'll start welding up the pads to the chain. See how far we can get on that this episode. All right, so that's the last of the 31 uh, track pads that I need. So I reclaimed those three prototype pads along with the 20, 28 other pads that I've already welded up. So we can start working on putting these on the chain. I've got what I think is a good setup here on the table for welding the track pads to the chain. I've got a space here to index the track pad. It'll slide in that into the jig there up against that stop and against the stop here. And this is the same jig I used to weld the backer to the to the pad to the track plate. And then the chain indexes on this bolt and is constrained by this rectangular stock and this flat stock here which are clamped to the table in a couple places each. So I can slide the chain up through here, index it on this pin, and that will line it up over the plate. These two pins are basically centered over the cutouts. 
it's it's not I was thinking initially that it would be very you know very critical but when I realized that the chain and even if the track pads are crooked a little bit is not going to matter because the chain is what controls it and I mean you want it to look right and it will look right I think this is plenty accurate I'm going to be, you know, I think pretty much on the money all the way through. So, anyway, that's my setup. I'm going to weld a couple here, let them cool, look at them, and come back and weld some more. I welded three track pads to the chain and you know as the track moves along the table here and the pads go off the edge it was pulling every pulling the chain out of alignment so I've added some more supports here to the pads uh, so that they index here the the one I just weld will index here fit in a slot and be held vertical so the chain is held flat on the next track pad in the right position. So I, I'm, I haven't really tried welding more on this, but I will uh, in a minute here. But I did take these the ch whole chain off with the three pads and run it on the idlers and it runs fine through them. So I think that it's, it's plenty of clearance where the weld is here against the chain link. So I think they're going to have no problems with the uh, traveling through the through the idler wheels is the only concern the bogey wheels have a little more space between the wheel and the side of the chain so I'm set up here again I'm going to pick back up where I was I'm going to weld some more and hopefully try to knock out this particular track uh, I think you know the track when it's done is going to weigh several hundred pounds um, I didn't do an exact calculation, but I mean, it's going to be several hundred pounds, 300 pounds, something like that, I think. So, um, it's going to fall off the edge of this table as I weld it, as I pull the chain off the floor, you know, and bring it through this, through this channel. So there's a, a track here for it to run through between this rectangular tubing and this flat bar so it's constrained and held parallel to the table and then the pads fit in this jig here and then the the, the, the pad just as it's welded after it's welded is dropped in a slot here and held so that the chain is flat against the next pad so we'll see how this works I'll weld a couple and we'll check it out
I didn't have the this pad down. It was tilted up slightly, so it pulled the link off the tread. Alright, so I've made one more change. I've added an outfeed table for the chain for the track to come out of the out of the welding jig. So that'll help reduce the amount of track that gets um, handled and is hanging over and putting pressure on the welding jig. So that should help. We'll see how that goes. Weld a couple more. having a little bit of an issue on this link because this chain won't fold 
won't fold that way. I think this link is made wrong so it won't pivot. It looks to me like this link is pushed this way, drilled off center. So this is a faulty link. Yeah, it, it does look like it, this link is shifted this way. So it's hitting the plate. It looks like this segment is shifted this way. So it sticks out further here than this side does. So it won't rotate past that point, which it won't rotate past that point, which is a problem. So I'm going to need to disassemble that link, grind that, grind that link and put it back together. But so far I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. I think 26, so I should have 27, 28, 29, 30, and then there's one more that's the, that's the master link. So I've got one, two, three, four, five more, five more track pads to weld on. I need to fix the problem with this link. I, um, it's clearly it's clearly made wrong. If you can look at it here and see how this is sticking out more, for example, than this one. It's just a little bit, little bit wider because this link is shifted this way. It may only be a sixteenth of an inch or something, but it's enough to keep that link from rotating. I may be able to grind it without removing it, but I'm afraid I might have to, I'm going to have to remove it. All right, well, I made good progress. It's taken me a couple hours here to jig all this up and start welding and moving the track down the table here, but it seems to be working fine in terms of my, my jig and my setup seems to be working okay. The track is heavy. I'm going to have to use my crane to to pick it up because I'm not going to be able to pick it up. I don't want to hurt my back. My back's a little bit sore as it is. Okay, well, that's about it for today. I'm going to take a break. It is almost it's getting close to dinner time, or at least it's close to nap time. Um, we'll come back. See you shortly. So I actually uh, changed my mind and took, I think, the easier route here. I went ahead and cut the welds on both sides of this link, took the chain out and ground this corner of this link, actually both sides, so that it moves easily. And I'll re-weld it and keep going. Trying to get these pins out is quite, uh, quite difficult. I mean, I, I wish I had a chain break or a special press to do that, but even even if I had one, I couldn't use it because it's well it was welded to this pad. So you know, it was easy enough just to take a zip disc and cut the weld, and we'll go back and replace it.
I just got a couple more to go here. I think I have the same problem with this link. But I think it moves enough to go around the sprocket, so I'm not gonna. I think it's. I think it moves enough to go around the sprocket, though. I don't know if it's enough for me to weld pad on it. That's a shame. All right, well, I'm just going to disassemble this and Weld the pad on manually. I've got this one and one more. to get the master link and put it in here. In order to make the last two welds, I've gone ahead and uh, disassembled the rig, my guides. I'm going to do these manually. I can space them as you know accurately enough. So I've got this one set up. And then this is the last, this, this is like the master link. So this will be the last one and I'll weld it separately like this. 
and then we'll use this as the master link, the whole, the whole pad assembly. So I have two pins to put in, one pin here, and then the other pin goes in here on the other end of the track. So, okay, let me finish welding these two, and then let's see what we, what we wind up with here. So this is the pin which has to go in here and uh, I'm going to sand it down a little bit so it fits and maybe chamfer the these holes. Alright so I'm done welding the all the track pads. I've got them all on here. Alright so I'm just go grind the you see how they've they've upset the end of this pin. See it enlarge it enlarges it there, so that's what keeps it from you know falling out. So, since I'm going to tack weld it or plug weld it on each side, and then the last one, you know, we'll do the same with the the, the last one over here, which will you know connect to the other end. I'm going to go just grind this down. Point four three seven is just under seven sixteenths, which is point four three seven five. So I'm wondering if
Well, that makes things a lot easier. Let's see. Well, that just proves that the chain is not hardened. All right, well that's that's the answer. Drill these out with a 7/16 drill and the pin will go through much more easily. All right. So I'm not going to weld that now. I'm going to wait till I get the um, get ready to put the track on the on the dozer and I will when I hook everything up, I'll have this pin and this pin to finalize the, the connection. Look who's here. Look who's here. There's my brew brew. Where's my brew brew? How you doing, huh, honey? How you doing? You being a good boy? You being being daddy's good boy? Where's Butchie? Huh? Where's Butchie? We don't care where Butchie is, do we? No, we don't care. We don't want to see Butchie because he gets he gets some loving too. Oh, you got your bark collar on. Mommy put your bark collar on you because you were barking. You shouldn't be doing that. Where's go get Butchie? Go get Butchie. Is he outside? Is Butchie outside? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. All right, you're a good boy. You're a good boy. Brutus, Brutus comes in the shop ten times as frequently as Butchie to, to see me. Um, he's definitely a more, I don't know whether he's more needy, more affectionate. Brutus, Butchie's very affectionate too, but Brutus is a more sensitive, is more sensitive of the two. So he comes in a lot more frequently, I guess, to get reassurance or hugs or whatever. All right, let me see if I can finish drilling this last link out. It's working. I think it's going to work.
I guess I should clamp it down, resisting the need to do that. Okay, so that'll make it a lot easier to put that together. A little while ago I said I was going to go in for dinner. I did go in for dinner, and uh, but I couldn't resist coming back out here. It was bugging me that I had that problem, so I felt like I had to fix it. So I came out back out. It's, uh, what is it, about 8 o'clock in the evening. All right, I'm done for today. It's a long day. Um, we'll come back tomorrow and see if we can get this, I'd like to try to get this track on the track, on the, on the dozer. So if I can figure out how to manhandle it down to the floor without hurting myself, um, we'll do that. All right, we'll come back. I'm going to take a break for a few minutes from working on the track and work on the, the fuel tank. I'm going to go ahead and clean it up and uh, repaint it so I'm going to spend a little bit of time doing that this morning so we can get it mounted on the track all right I'm over here at the parts washer of course I got the the fuel tank and I found the straps a couple straps that hold it degrease this So I did buy a new, I lost the gas cap, the cap for this or the tractor it came on didn't have a cap or something so I was able to buy a replacement cap, that's kind of a standard. And I put a little bolt in the uh, drain hole here just to keep debris out. The inside of the tank is pretty clean. So 
not bad for a mid an early 1970s, 1972 or 74 tractor. All right. I'm going to use the wire brush on this uh, since it's got the ridges on it. I like to use these paint stripper wheels, but we may wind up use, going to that after all. So that, uh, that paint stripper wheel does great. I love those things. All right, I'm not, not trying to get every speck of paint off this. I got, you know, 90% off and what's left is well adhered, be fine. Uh, I'm gonna prime both, both the tank and the, the straps. I'm gonna use the rust uh, reformer primer since these are both, these are steel. And uh, on the straps, I wasn't trying to get all the rust off, just the loose surface rust. So we'll get the rust reformer and hit this with a coat. All right, we'll let that dry and come back and put the 
Cup Cadet white paint over it. Tomorrow. They want 24 hours dry time on this primer before you overcoat it with a, another coat of paint. I, sometimes I cheat that a little bit, but try to give it at least uh, 12 hours. It's on there. It's on there loose, loosely. Now I need to pull the tension wheel up. I've got a pin punch in the master length to hold it. Let me see what we can do about raising this. I think this is too heavy for me to move by myself. Pretty tough. So my pin that goes through here, I just need you know three quarters of an inch more space. I need to come up with a better way to jack this out to get the link in there. All right, so what the pick point for the crane is such that I can't get this wheel back, but I put this hydraulic jack in here and that's working fine. So I think this is the, the answer. in there. Let me get this off. All right, I've got a pin punch in the master link right now, so that's uh, going to create issues, you know, going over the, the idlers. But, all right, I think that's pretty good shape. When we set it down on the ground, that track will come up into those bogies, and that will take up add more slack to the track because it's hanging down below the bogies right now. So once we do that, I think we'll see more slack in here and I'll be able to tighten up the... Um, but that's... a little bit of a accomplishment there, I think.
And if you watch this track over here and this chain over here, we can make them go in opposite directions. At the same time, they both go in the same direction. All right, so this is the pin that I'm currently using to hold the chain together here. And I've got a couple pieces of flat bar stock clamped to the pads with C-clamps. And I'm going to attempt to replace this with a proper pin here. didn't work All right, close. I need to go another little bit. Get it through that. All right, well, my problem is it's still pulled away, so I need to compress this, this link to get the other outside link to line up with the pin. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to do that. I've got C-clamps on the two pads and then have a hand screw squeezing them together and I think I've got the hole on the other side aligned. So let's see. Yep. Up oh, too far. So I'm going to grind it down a little bit so that it doesn't interfere with the idler. Welding one side is probably sufficient, but I'm going to go ahead and hit the other side just out of an abundance of caution. track is hang is sagging below the bogey wheels so I do need to you know get that down on the 
the ground to make sure that clears, but I think there's enough clearance between those wheels that there you know, won't be any issue. Everything seems to be seems to be working okay. So all right guys, I think that's a wrap on this episode. Got a lot accomplished with the getting the track running on this side, assembled and running. Uh, I think the next uh, next priority is of, is to get the other side assembled. Got to cut out the track pads and the backers and weld the the track up as I did with this one. And so we'll come back next time working on that. <clears throat> I am we are working toward getting the running engine as well. So I'll get the gas tank painted. We'll get that mounted. All I have after that really is uh, muffler, carbur uh, air cleaner, and electrical. Hook up the starter, and I can run the tractor with a jump pack. I don't need to have the battery. I do plan to install a battery box in the back under underneath the seat. So that's coming as well, and uh, as long as well as fenders and that sort of thing. Update the controls. So. Got some stuff to do still, but we're getting closer to a running machine. And you know, there's a lot of comments which you know are very, very complimentary. I appreciate that. I'm I'm I don't represent myself as being any kind of an expert or I'm an amateur, I'm a hobbyist, is all I am. Uh, and but there are questions about why don't I do you know something a certain way a little more a little more professional a little more elaborate a little more like a real piece of equipment and my response to that is uh i mean obviously i have limited resources limited time other stuff to do uh and this is not a commercial piece of equipment it's not going to be used every day to clear land or build a road or anything like that. It's a, it's a toy. And I've said that before. It's just, uh, it's about the process of challenging myself to see if I can, can build this. Uh, so, you know, that's why I'm, you know, maybe taking things which may appear to a professional and, you know, some of you guys are heavy equipment operators and engineers on heavy equipment. And, and, you know, you ask why I don't do something the way you would, would do it. Obviously, you know, I don't have the uh, resources or, or knowledge or talent to do that stuff. I'm doing what I can. Uh, I think it's going to work. Um, it's a lot of compromises and you know, I'm prioritizing stuff. I mean, cause this is basically a proof of concept, right? So I want to make sure it works before I go the extra mile to put in a more elaborate tensioning system or more elaborate tracks. So, I mean, it's like grousers on the tracks. I mean, I've got no grousers on the tracks now. They're going to slip. I know that. Um, but I want to make sure the machine works before I put all that time and energy into installing the grousers. And I expect to do that. I've actually got half, half inch square, got 120 feet of half inch square bar stock that I plan to weld, cut into short lengths and weld to the tracks as grousers. So, I mean, I've got that, it's in the plan. I just haven't done it yet because I want to make sure that, you know, I've got, you know, something that works before I make that additional investment. And that's the same kind of comment about a lot of the stuff on the on the on the machine so just kind of give you my perspective on it not that it you know makes that much much difference so thank you for watching leave a comment uh, hit the thumbs up button subscribe share with your friends we'll see you guys next time